So myth number three is that the lack of vitamin B12 in plant foods proves people need meat. I don't know if you've ever heard this one before, but it, it seems for a lot of people logical that if it's not in plants, then obviously you die if you don't get it. You know, you get terrible nutritional deficiencies and you could die. Um, obviously that proves something, right? Well, in fact, it's kind of interesting. The reality here is that B12 is produced by bacteria, okay? And it is found in anything that is contaminated with that bacteria. It could be dirty water, dirty plants, dirty meat, whatever. Whatever happens to be contaminated with, with the bacteria. Uh, and, and in fact, ancient times, we probably got quite a bit from dirty water and dirty plants. But what do we do now to our water? What do we do now to our plants? To avoid getting pathogenic bacteria, right? We get rid of the bacteria because we don't want to be consuming stuff that's going to make us sick. So in fact, we're getting rid of the B12 at the same time. So we can't wash B12 out of animal products, right? We have to cook them to get rid of pathogenic bacteria. Whereas with plants and with our water, we purify them in other ways. So the reality is that plant foods are not reliable B12 sources, but that's not because they're inferior. It's because they aren't contaminated with bacteria when we eat them usually. Uh, a lot of people think seaweed is a good source of B12. And it's important to know that seaweed actually does contain B12. The problem with seaweed is it contains both what we call active B12 and inactive B12, or something we call non-cobalamin coronoids. Okay, so they're just B12 lookalikes. They're like fake B12. They look so much like B12 that they can actually attach to B12 receptor sites. And, and you know what happens when that happens, right? The B12 can't get in there. Fermented foods, you know, they contain very little, if any, active B12. But the thing to know here is that they used to contain B12 because we used to ferment tempeh and other fermented soy foods in these big wooden vats that had these slabs of wood with bacteria in between each slab. And so some of the bacteria would get into the fermented soy foods. Now what do we ferment things in? Clean stainless steel vats. And so it's just, we, we really can't rely on them anymore. Uh, organic vegetables, some people think that's a reliable source of B12. If you grow it on um, live manure, like human manure called night soil, yeah, you could get some B12, but you might get some other stuff you don't like. Okay? So probably not a good plan, but otherwise these are not reliable sources of vitamin B12. Now some people say, well, we, we make enough in our stomach and our small intestines. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, the reality is we, we make plenty right here. Called this thing right here called the large intestine. But guess where B12 is absorbed? Right here. And which way do things usually go? Uh, that way. <laughs> so we tend not to get a lot when you know we're producing it. Now there is another way. There is another way. It is the um, oral cavity. You can actually produce a fair bit in your oral cavity. However, you probably won't have any friends if you do so. <laughs> So that's it. You don't produce enough in your body to satisfy your needs. Now vitamin B12 is actually very efficiently recycled in the human body. Some people, stores can last two or three years, but I've actually seen people deficient within 10 to 12 months of not including a reliable source. In babies, uh, it's, it's, it, you know, worse because they're born with very few stores and especially if their moms were vegan and didn't include a source in their diet, they're born with almost no stores. Within weeks of birth, they will start to develop some clinical signs of B12 deficiency. Within 9 to 12 months, they will have irreversible brain damage. Okay? And you know what happens when that happens? If you're vegan and you're an ethical vegan, what you're doing when something like that happens is you are telling the world they need to eat meat. Okay, because your baby, that baby ends up on the headlines. Vegan diet's dangerous for babies or for anybody. So you really have to be careful of that. This is, 
you know, if, if you look at um, B12 levels in vegetarians, they're below that of omnivores, which is not a big surprise. Vegans, very significantly below. Raw vegans, I was absolutely amazed when I looked at the research. Raw vegan B12 levels are dismal. Because there's myths within the raw food community that B12 isn't an issue. I'll tell you, it is an issue, and most raw vegans are extremely deficient in B12. And that will counteract almost every advantage you're giving yourself through your wonderful raw diet. This just shows here, 120 to 160 picograms per meal is the average for people that aren't providing themselves a source. You need to have at least 300 picograms per meal, some would say 400, uh, to prevent the increase in homocysteine levels. Okay, so that's, you know, so what does B12 deficiency look like? Well, you know, you get megaloblastic anemia, which is sort of similar to iron deficiency in terms of what it does to you. Weakness, fatigue, irritability, depression. You get nerve damage. And one of the first symptoms of B12 deficiency in vegetarians and vegans is numbness and tingling in their fingertips. But you can also get it in your toes, the tip of your nose, any of your extremities. Okay, so that if, if you're vegan and you haven't been supplementing at all, and you've got numbness and tingling in your fingertips, you want to get your B12 status tested. And if you are a consumer of seaweed, the B12, the serum B12 tests do not distinguish between real B12 and fake B12. So you could get a false, oh, you're fine. You need to do an MMA, meth methylmalonic acid, or TC2, or something that will, will show you for sure that your B12 is okay. Uh, gastrointestinal disturbances, indigestion, diarrhea, sore tongue, reduced appetite, and finally this thing I talked about, homocysteine, and the nutrition students will know exactly what this is, but it's a breakdown product of the amino acid methionine, and it increases our risk of heart disease, it can increase our risk of birth defects, and cause premature death. So you don't want your homocysteine uh, uh, getting sky high. Practical pointers here. Do not mess with vitamin B12. Just make sure you've got some sort of a source in your diet. So what do you need? Well, for lacto-ovo vegetarians or for vegans, you can use supplements, you can use fortified foods. And for lacto-ovo vegetarians under the age of 50, you can also use dairy products and eggs. But if you're a lacto over, over the age of 50, you should not rely on animal products for B12. For that matter, if you're an omnivore and you eat fish and, and poultry and, and meat, you should not rely on animal products for, for your vitamin B12. So how much do you need? Well, to keep homocysteine levels down, you should probably be aiming for about four micrograms a day from four to five foods in two or more meals to allow for enough absorption. The smaller the amount you take, the greater you'll absorb. About 25 micrograms if you're doing a daily supplement, and twice a week, about 1,000 micrograms if you're doing a kind of a once in a while supplement, twice a week, 1,000 micrograms each time. And that should do the trick for you. You're not gonna do, do badly if you take too much B12, it's just excreted. It'll just be a waste of money, that's all. So, but it's not a bad idea, if you're vegan especially, to get your B12 levels tested. So, what, what foods have, are fortified with B12? Well, some meat analogs, ready-to-eat cereals, but the big one is right here, Red Star Nutritional Yeast Vegetarian Support Formula, 4 micrograms per heaping tablespoon. And this stuff um, can be sprinkled on your popcorn, can be sprinkled on your salad, can be added to patties or whatever you're making. And it's quite tasty. It almost has a bit of a cheesy flavor. So this is a good, reliable source, re relatively reliable source of B12 uh, for, for vegetarians. 